Hello aspirants, welcome to another UPSC update brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. In this video, we are going to see about the recently released UPSC notification regarding the recruitment in EPFO. See, the recruitment is for the post of Enforcement Officer or Accounts Officer and for the post of Assistant Provident Fund Commissioner. If you are an UPSC aspirant, then it is a wonderful opportunity for you. I will tell you why. Because 60 percentage of the syllabus of this exam overlaps with the UPSC syllabus. So to help you ace the examination, Shankar IAS Academy has started a test batch. And this test batch is going to start on 23rd March 2023. This test batch will contain a total number of 25 tests and the duration is 2 hours. It will happen between 2 pm to 4 pm. So grab this opportunity, register for this test batch and ace the examination. Now we'll see the other details regarding the EPFO exam that you should know. A detailed UPSC EPFO recruitment 2023 notification has been released recently. The recruitment is for the post of Enforcement Officer or otherwise called as Accounts Officer and for the post of Assistant Provident Fund Commissioner in Employee Provident Fund Organization. Now, if you see the vacancy for these two posts, 418 vacancies are announced for the post of Enforcement Officer or Accounts Officer and 159 vacancies are announced for the post of Assistant Provident Fund Commissioner. So, totally 577 vacancies are there. And if you look at the job type, EO or AO, post is permanent and it is a Group B post, non-ministerial. And the pay scale for this post is level 8 in the pay matrix as per 7th pay commission. And the post of APFC, it is also permanent. It is group A post. It is also non-ministerial. And the pay scale for this post is level 10 in the pay matrix as per 7th pay commission. And yeah, it is good to know about the job type and the vacancies and all. But the most important thing that you should know about an examination is whether you are eligible to take that examination or not. So now coming to the eligibility criteria, first of all let's see the age factor. For the post of EO or AO, the maximum age eligibility is 30 years. And for the post of APFC, the maximum age is 35 years. See the minimum age is not given in the notification. And also know that there is also age relaxation for certain categories. Now moving on to the educational factor. See, the essential educational qualification for the post of EO or AO is bachelor's degree in any subject from recognized university or institute. Likewise, the essential educational qualification for the post of APFC is degree of a recognized university or equivalent. Desirable qualification is diploma in company law, labor law or public administration. So aspirants, if you think that you are coming under the eligibility criteria for these posts, don't waste any time. Go and apply for these examinations. And remember, today is the last date. Now let us see about the recruitment process and pattern. See, the recruitment process for both of the posts involve a recruitment test and interview. See, this recruitment test, it will be of objective type questions with multiple choices of answer. So, it is basically MCQs. I know that the recruitment test is separate for both the posts. The duration of the test is 2 hours and the test will contain a total number of 120 questions and each question will carry equal marks. You should know an important thing here. Negative marking is there for the wrong answers. Okay, keep this in mind. Every wrong answer will carry a deduction of one third of the marks assigned to that particular question. Keep this in mind while attempting the questions. And the weightage for the recruitment test and interview is in the ratio of 75 is to 25. So 75 percentage weightage is given to the recruitment test and only 25 percentage weightage is given to the interview process. So recruitment test is very important. It is just multiple choice questions. If you ace this test, you can directly go to the interview. If you ace the interview also, your name will definitely be in the final list of selection. So don't miss this opportunity again and again I'm saying don't wait go and apply for this examination. Now I kind of created a hype about this recruitment test right. Now let us see the syllabus for this recruitment test. And this is the syllabus for the post of EO and the APFC. If you compare the syllabus you can notice that there are certain areas which are overlapping. 
general english syllabus is same for both the examinations and both the examinations includes freedom movement indian freedom struggle it includes development issues indian polity economy general accounting principles industrial relation labor law general science and knowledge of computer applications mental ability and quantitative aptitude and social security in india some of the differences in the syllabus of apfc include indian culture and heritage population and globalization auditing and insurance so the percentage of difference in syllabus is only 20 percentage the remaining are same for both the exams so it's like a wonderful opportunity for aspirants you don't have to sit and prepare the entire syllabus for both the examinations if you finish the syllabus of one exam then you have to do some additional work for the other exam that's all is needed now i'll tell you the resources also where you have to study the areas that are given in the syllabus okay first of all for general english just read the editorial section of hindu newspaper or indian express newspaper but if you think that you are lacking a little bit behind in grammar and comprehension and all don't worry just refer to this book which is known as objective general english by sp bakshi secondly if you take indian freedom struggle you can just refer to spectrum's a brief history of modern india and that is all is enough thirdly coming to the current events and developmental issues you can just read newspaper or you can just follow current affairs materials that are available online or if you want to take notes of your own you can refer to pib yojana and kurukshetra it will be very helpful for you and the next one is indian polity for indian polity lakshmikanth book is more than enough everything that is needed for polity is given in lakshmikanth you just read that book alone but if you don't have any prior background of the political system for your reference you can read political science ncrts from class 9th to 12th it will help you a lot and the next one is indian economy you can either refer to ncrt books from class 9th to 11th or you can refer indian economy by ramesh singh and the next one is general accounting principles see this is a new one right if you are a new psc aspirant you would not have studied about accounting and all this is new for us so my advice would be to read the ncrts so you can read the class 11th and 12th accountancy ncrts or otherwise you can refer to introduction to accountancy by yes chand also and the next one is industrial relations and labor laws for this you can refer industrial relations and labor laws by piali ghosh and the next one is general science just refer the ncrts of class 6th to 10th that is enough but at the same time be aware about the science and technologies in current affairs also so for that you can refer isro website department of biotechnology website or department of science and technology website also and the next one is knowledge of computer applications here you can refer to the book computer awareness by arihant regarding computer applications and all they'll ask only basic questions so this is enough and the next one is general mental ability and quantitative aptitude for this you can refer quantitative aptitude by rs agarwal book regarding quantitative aptitude and all you have to practice 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 that will only help you and the next one is social security in india see for this area just refer to the social security schemes and programs in ministry of social justice and empowerment ministry of women and child development health and family welfare minority affair labor and employment and ministry of housing and urban affairs and that is enough for this area now these are all the overlapping areas in the syllabus now i'll tell you the difference part the different area in the apfc exam is indian culture and heritage for this part you can refer to indian art and culture by nitin singhania and the next one is population development and globalization right for this you can refer indian geography ncrts of class 11th and 12th see in these ncrts human geography will be there so in that information about population mortality rate birth rate migration all such informations will be there just refer these two books for the static part of development and globalization you can refer to indian economy by ramesh singh and the next one is insurance for this refer to irdai website and cover some basic concepts like what is insurance and some principles of insurance that is all is enough and finally we have statistics see for statistics refer to the ncert of class 11th and the book is statistics for economics so these are all the books that you have to refer to a final reminder for you aspirants 
Shankar IAS Academy has started a test batch which is going to start on 23rd March 2023. Register for this test batch because it is a wonderful opportunity for UPSC aspirants. The test batch will contain a total number of 25 tests and it will happen between 2 pm to 4 pm. Don't miss this opportunity and thank you for listening. I'll meet you in another video with another UPSC update. Until then, it's me signing off.